You break strings. I break strings too. I break loads of strings. So I, I know your pain. I feel your pain. And uh, I also know why you're breaking strings. There's a few things we need to get out of the way first. That, um, yeah, your saddle, there might be a problem with your saddle, but you've probably checked that. Uh, if the string's breaking up near your uh, your nut or your um, or, or your uh, tuner, uh, you need to check that. Obviously, that that's that's obvious, right? Okay, that's obvious. So if you checked everything on the guitar, and the strings are breaking uh, on the saddle, uh, which they invariably do, that's where they usually go. And and you've checked everything else out, and you don't know why you're breaking strings on the saddle so much. Uh, I can tell you why that's happening and there are two factors involved here just two factors you need to know about so I'm going to tell you about those and I'm going to tell you what you need to do factor one uh, right I got a piece of wire here right here's a piece of wire and um, imagine that is your string bear with me here all right let, let, let me get this done right um, I'm going to pretend that this string let's put it this way let's put it this way right and to do string is going up and over your saddle like that. Pretend my thumb's the saddle, right? So there you go. And you're playing, you're playing the string, you're playing away. And while you're playing away, that string's vibrating and it's pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing. Hey, you might be bending it as well, you know, uh, doing some big bends and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyway, you're playing away. Uh, this is factor one, right? So just bear with me. So what happens is, is what that's happening minutely, if you look here, what happens is, is that's pushing forward over the saddle, it's pushing back over the saddle, and forward over the saddle, and back over the saddle. And this is happening loads and loads and loads of times while you're playing. Basically what's happening, if you get a piece of wire and you bend it enough, like this. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, it breaks in two. So, that's kind of the reason why your string breaks on the saddle. That's factor one. Factor two um, is a little bit more uh, in depth. But anyway, I'm not an academic or anything, but this is basically what happens. When you're playing, your right hand is sweaty. And that sweat lays on the strings where the saddles are. That sweat... Um, gets into the, into the strings and starts oxidizing them strings and breaking that metal down, making that part of the string um, weaker. Indeed, the left hand's playing and you're sweating and it's making all the other strings sweaty and oxidized. So they get, you know, you've seen strings that are old strings, they all look all like rusty and stuff like that. That's basically oxidation. Now, what we have to remember is on the saddle part of your string, that is where the most stress is happening on that string. So if it's going to break anywhere, that is where it's going to break. So, factor two, the more acidic, if that's the right word, or, or alkaline, I don't know, uh, your sweat is, uh, the more it's going to eat into that string. Generally, uh, off uh, my Les Paul, which is overstrung, uh, I'll, get, I'll probably get a gig and a rehearsal out of that guitar before the strings just give up. Um, for example, I've got another guitar where the strings just go up and over the bridge, you know, um, kind of Fender style. Uh, that, that won't last so long. Um, but that's because of the two factors. Now, there's no other reason for it. Uh, the guitar's working great. There's nothing wrong with the sound. There's nothing wrong with anything with the guitar mechanically. It's just those two factors. So, okay, so if you're really unlucky and um, uh, your, your sweat is acidic, you know, you're like a monster or something, uh, I don't know, but generally I got a feeling that uh, you'll probably you'll probably like me. If you've got a new set of strings on before you start the gig, that set of strings will last to the end of the gig, no problem. Okay, unless you've got a serious acidic problem, which I suggest you change your diet. <laughs> but anyway, no, seriously, um, the way out of this is the problem. That, okay, the problem that you have is that you know you break a string, you think ah. Oh, not break another string you know it's more money so every time you know every time you know you do a gig perhaps you might want to put on a new set of strings I do I put a new set of strings every time I do a gig without foul that way I never break a string at a gig ever ever so that solves that problem but then you say ah oh, well I pay you know 10 pounds for a packet of strings well don't pay 10 pounds for a packet of strings because 
Uh, it's pointless paying £10 for a packet of strings because they say they last longer when they don't last longer. Just buy a packet of strings for £3. This is what I do. I buy my strings, I get them for like three three pounds each, uh, and I string up regularly. That's basically what I do. That's how I get around the problem. Unfortunately, there is no other way around the problem. That is the only way around it because that's what happens. Oxidation, your sweat on metal, then the and the, the angle that you're at. You can increase that angle. You can help that angle. You can put roller bridges in, string saver saddles, whatever. I mean, I don't think they do a heck of a lot. They do a little bit of help. They help a bit, but they don't do a heck of a lot because at the end of the day, it's all to do that brake angle. It's all to do that, that sweat. Factor one and factor two. Hopefully, uh, that's reasonably clear. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Um, put your comments in the bottom, share the video, all that kind of stuff. Catch you later!